Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga with Kelly. I am Kelly, and today we are going to do a heart opening flow. And what I mean by that is sometimes when we sit at a desk all day or we're staring down at our phone, or even if we're closing ourselves off to all the love and beauty there is in the world, sometimes we find ourselves in this hunched over rounded position, you know, protecting our heart, guarding ourselves from harm. And what we're gonna do today is really open the heart. We're gonna elongate, filling up the lungs fully. We're gonna elongate the spine. We are going to stretch the spine, not strain the spine, and move towards that open heart. So we'll start very gently on the floor. So if you wanna grab some blocks or um, a blanket or you know some kind of bolster or pillow, please do so. But as we flow into this heart opening practice, just setting the intention for yourself to be open, to be vulnerable in this safe space we've carved out together, to let love in, to let in all the beauty and joy and happiness this world has to offer. And I will see you on your mat. We are going to begin our heart opening flow sitting in Virasana, hero's pose. And I'm already in it. I'm sitting on my heels and I'm sitting up nice and tall. Um, I'm going to turn to the side so you can see. The hips are a little higher so we can get some more length in our spine. A lot of times we'll start our yoga practice sitting in um, Sukhasana, easy, happy pose. Um, but that may not be so easy and happy for some people. If you get really tight hips, you're already starting in a posture where your heart is closed off to receiving the practice. So that's why sitting up a little higher or putting you know, blocks under the knees or even elevating the hips on a block can help. Um, and in Virasana, we're going to do just that. So grabbing a block, you can any of the three heights, just put it underneath you and again, immediately I already feel like I'm sitting up taller my heart is open and I'm ready to receive this practice if you're very flexible or it would be more less comfortable for you to sit on the block you could remove the block open your knees hip distance apart and let your hips fall in between your heels and sit up nice and tall like this this is really uncomfortable for me it my knees do not like this at all so I'm gonna go back to putting the block but that may feel really delicious for you to sit like that. So listen to your body um, and find what works for you. Take a couple nice deep breaths. As you inhale, really fill up those lungs. Feel the expansion through the front of your body. And as you exhale, feel the grounding through the lower body. And this intention of being open to all the beauty, happiness, love and joy the world has to offer. Not only being open to receiving it, but tapping into that place in ourself so we can share it with others. You gently remove the block upon your heels. We're going to find a child's pose. So just with the big toes kissing, if you want more of an upper back thoracic spine stretch, you have the knees open really wide. So let's explore that one first. You walk the hands out, use the hands to push the hips towards the heels and soften the head into the earth. Inhale, lift your head, walk your hands back to your knees. And then bring the knees together. If you want more of a lower back stretch, sitting up nice and tall in Virasana Hero's Pose, you start to walk the hands forward or you can sweep the hands behind you, letting the arms rest on the earth and the palms rest. You bring your hands underneath your shoulders, gently come up to Virasana. I would say also in this heart opening flow, um, we're going to practice the ABCs. And in this particular part of the alphabet, A stands for awareness, awareness of what ha what's happening in our body. You know, am I being open or am I closing off? You know, we do want the opening 
uh, to happen in the poses. So just kind of like be aware of what you're feeling in your body. Um, the B would be breath, all right? We wanna breathe in deeply so we can feel the expansion of the lungs, the opening, the lengthening. And then C, I would say, would be curious. You know, being curious about the poses we're gonna explore. Just feel what you feel without any judgment, experience them, feel the sensation. If you feel pain, get out of it. Um, I'll show you ways to modify and intensify along the way. But our first set of poses, we will do um, on our bellies, prone. So I'm gonna remove the block and just start to move your way onto your belly. Just sending the legs out long. Maybe just bringing your hands underneath your forehead, letting your forehead rest on your hands. All right, now let's talk about what's happening in the body. If we're going to open the upper part of the body, we really need the lower part of the body helping us. Now, if we're on the floor playing board games or, I don't know, watching TV, doing whatever, like it's okay to be all floppy and comfortable. But if we're wanting to do some heart opening poses using the upper body, we need to make sure the lower body is working with us, not against us. So we don't be all floppy and loose. We want to start with our feet. So bring your head back to your hands. Really engage your legs. Point the, through the toes. Draw the knees up into the quads. Squeeze your glutes. Draw your navel in towards your low back. Like you're cinching everything in your middle. You're protecting your low back here. And then gently slide your elbows underneath your shoulders. Lifting your head and chest. But this is Sphinx pose. Gaze is forward, elbows are under the shoulders, using the hands to help push the upper body up, drawing the shoulder blades together, and keeping the lower body engaged. We don't want to hinge at the low back. It can really hurt us in the long run. We want to protect the low back. Opening up to the thoracic spine, the upper part of the back. And then exhale gently lower down. Let your hands re head rest on your hands. Now just flop those legs open. Awareness. Notice the difference between relaxed and engaged. All right, this time engage the legs. Press into the tops of your feet. Draw the kneecaps towards the quads. Squeeze the glutes. Draw your navel in. Pinch everything in the middle, tilting towards the pubic bone. And bring your arms out to a Y in front of you, pressing into the fingertips, tenting the hands, lift the head and shoulders. Breathe here. Engaging the low body. Let the breath really fill the lungs. And as you exhale, gently lower down. Let your hand, head rest on your hands. Let the legs relax, flop them around. And engage the legs. This time bring your hands underneath your shoulders, elbows back, hugging into your sides, and just a little lift to the head and shoulders. Or you should be able to lift your hands off the ground here comfortably. Again, make sure the low body is grounding you, protecting your low back. Keeping the hands where they are, just gently lower your head and shoulders, or head and chest, let the legs relax. Re-engage the legs. Feet, knees, quads, glutes, navel, pubic bone. Slide the hands a little further back so the fingertips are right underneath the shoulders. Gently lift the head, lift the chest. Straighten the arm. Right, turning the inner part of the elbows forward, the gaze forward, pulling the shoulders away from the ear. And this is Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Right, where the legs are down, the upper body is lifting. Gently lower everything down. Maybe this time bring your arms to your side. Turn your head to the right. Let the legs flop open. And then gently turn your head to the left. And bring your head through center. Engage your legs. And you feel the glutes squeezing together, tilting the pelvis forward slightly. This is pressing into the pubic bone, squeezing the navel in. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, maybe slide them gently back. As you press into the hands, 
and straighten the arms and lift the chest. This time you lift the legs off the ground. Great. This is Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Upward Facing Dog. You keep breathing here. If you feel a breeze under the knees, you're in up dog. If the legs are down, you're in cobra. Both beautiful heart opening upward facing. And we're not sinking through the shoulders. We're pushing the earth away. The gaze is forward or up. We're not throwing the head back. Not only do we want to prevent that hinge in the low back, we will be cautious in the cervical spine, the upper part of the back of your neck. Here, gently lower everything down. And then press your hips to your heels. Child's pose. You're walking your hands to your knees. Sitting up in Virasana. Okay, so those are a couple heart opening postures, just laying on the ground, starting to get comfortable with the idea of stretching the upper back while protecting the lower back. Great. Right? Let's um let's go, let's go a little deeper. So let's come back on your bellies. Just let, bring your hands underneath your head. Again, noticing are my legs relaxed? Are they engaged? The first thing is to engage them. You might really squeeze those glutes as you press into the pubic bone, draw the navel in. Bring your arms to your side, palms down. Lift the chest, lift the head, pressing into your hands, or maybe lifting the hands up, pressing into the tops of your feet. Keep breathing and lifting and squeezing here, and then gently lower down. Extend the arms out long in front of you. Let's try that one leg at a time. You're going to bend the right leg. Reach the right hand to the outer blade and the top of the foot, and start to lift the head and chest as you lift your left arm forward. So you're pressing the foot into your right hand. You're letting the right hand pull back. Really, really this heart opening. We're also getting a nice stretch in the front of the right leg, in the quad. And then gently lower the head and chest, release the leg. Let's do that on the other side. So bend the left leg, reach the left hand back, start to lift the chest and head, reach the right arm forward, press the left foot into the left hand, let the hand pull back. Keep breathing here. And then gently lower down. Release. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Press your hips to your heels. Child's pose. Let's come back under our bellies. And we can try that with both legs. Or you can try doing the right and the left again. Your choice. If you're with me, reach your arms out long in front of you. You're going to bend your right leg, bend your left leg. Reach for the right foot, reach for the left foot. Start to lift your head and chest as you press your feet into your hands. Maybe lift a little higher. Breathe here. And then gently lower down, hands under your shoulders. Press your hips to your heels. Child's pose. Right, come on up. In, in Virasana. Okay, so now those poses we did on our belly in this prone position, eventually we get comfortable with that. We can explore it later in standing poses. So I'll show you today, but we'll talk about it in another video. But again, the idea is like, imagine I'm laying on my mat, right? You have that nice long Tadasana spine, right? Reaching the hands up and then bending the left leg, reaching for the left foot, keeping the knee pointing down and then creating that balance or hinge. The knee's still pointing down, but we take that nice heart opener and take it a little deeper, standing on our mat. All right, we'll try that on the other side. Reach the arms up, drop the right hand down, bend the right leg, reach for the top of the foot. Knee's still pointing down. Imagine I'm laying on my mat, right? And then as you press the foot into the hand, you start to hinge the upper body forward, your heart opening, keeping the right knee pointing down. Rise up, return to center. Okay. The other one with when both legs were back, 
Yes, that's backbend. And we visited backbends when we were exploring the Ashtanga short form uh, a few videos back. So if you want to check it out um, when we did the full backbend, full wheel. But again, the, every pose is a building block for another pose. Um, we modify, we intensify, we take it from the ground, we take it to standing. So we're learning to be open to receiving love and joy, happiness, and all of the things that are good in this world. All right, let's, um, let's come to downward facing dog. You're creating that upside down V with your body. Taking some nice deep breaths. And take a peek at the big toe of your right foot. We're gently going to start to lift the right leg, but only lift it as high as you can still see the big toe. The reason is we want to keep the hips level and square. We're not opening the hips quite yet. We want to draw the right knee in towards the nose and bring the right knee behind the right wrist, dropping the left knee down and sliding the left foot back. We're coming into King Pigeon. Now we are going to open the hips. Right? But we're going to open the hips with a nice open heart. Right, so if it feels like you're leaning to one side or the other, you may need to stick a bolster or a block underneath here. Um, but we want the weight distributed between the two legs, sitting up nice and tall, so we can lead with our heart and fold in over our bent leg. And let your head rest on something. It could be your hands. It could be a block. It could be a towel. But one of the beautiful benefits of this pose, doing it with an open heart, allows us to be vulnerable to let go of the things that we tend to shove down in to the biggest joint of our body, storing up tension, tightness. So let yourself be vulnerable. Let yourself be open to letting those things go that don't serve you. You can create space for all the good. So gently lift your head, walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Feel the weight distributed between the two legs, and then lean into the right leg, swing the left leg around, and just give it a little gentle shake out. So we're going to do that on the other side. Okay, so make your way to downward facing dog. Take a peek at the big toe of your left foot. Start to lift the left leg. It's going to lead with the heel. Keep the foot flexed. You can see that the hips are leveled off. And then draw the left knee in towards your nose as you place it behind the left wrist. Dropping your back knee, pushing the weight towards the leg behind you. Again, if you start to feel yourself leaning into the hip, stick a block or a bolster underneath there. Or a way to modify here is to lean into that hip and draw the right knee or thigh up towards the left foot. This is called deer pose. So we're still facing forward and you can elongate out over the bent leg. There's just less stress or less stretch um, in the right hip flexor. So again, option to modify here or stay in King Pigeon. Nice deep breath. You're going to inhale, lift your head, walk your hands towards your knees, sit up nice and tall. Again, now I showed you a way to modify here as a way to intensify. So if you need more, want more, and you want a deeper stretch, you could bend this leg and reach back for the foot. Maybe stay right here. Right? Maybe draw the foot into the crease of the elbow. Maybe Reach the left arm up and over for this deep heart opening mermaid, merman stretch. Okay, maybe that's too much. It's all good. <laughs> Come back to your pigeon and then ease your weight into your left hip. Swing your right leg around and give it a gentle shake out. All right, we are going to roll onto our backs next. And if you have a block or a bolster, I'm going to grab it now. If you don't, that's okay. I'll show you another way. But gently ease your weight onto your back. 
Extend your legs out long. Feel the gentle pull of gravity supporting you, grounding you into your mat, into the earth. And you're going to place your forearms next to your body so you can come up onto the forearms. Grabbing a block, you can sit up. You can place it between the shoulder blades. And I would say that's probably about maybe three ribs up on me. You know, whatever height works best for you. And maybe if you have a block for your head back there. So gently roll back onto the block. And place the other block underneath your head. Take a big inhale. And a big exhale. And then soften into the stretch. Really beautiful heart opener. So, so good. Have a couple more rounds of breath. You could even explore removing the block underneath your head, just bringing the crown of the head to the earth. So if, again, if that's too much on your cervical spine and your neck, then don't do it. But awareness, right? Okay, gently lift your head, bring your arms down to your side so you can press your weight into your forearms and then remove the block. Gently roll onto your back and let that settle in. Give yourself a few breaths to melt into your mat. Now, if you didn't have a block or a bolster, I'm going to show you another way to do this. It's called Matsyasana, fish pose. So bring your arms to your side. You can press into your elbows, your forearms to lift yourself up. All right, let's come all the way up to see it. You're going to take your hands, kind of like a diamond, a triangle, and um, let the thumbs kiss, and you're going to create a little cradle underneath your lowest part of your back, like on your hips, so, so you're sitting on your hands. So you're going to hug the elbows in, coming to your forearms, really lift through the chest here, and soften through the neck. Lifting up through the chest, you're like pushing into the forearm. Breathing in deeply, breathing out completely. And then lift the head to see the toes so you can roll off the arms and come back down. Let's bend the knees, open the feet as wide as your mat, and just let the knees fall in toward each other. So again, checking in with the low back. If you're feeling any stress or strain, it's a reminder when you are exploring the upper body, you need to protect the lower body. So you'll need to squeeze everything in. And then bring the arms overhead. We'll just gently windshield wiper the legs side to side. And then come back through center. Toe heel the feet together. Bring your arms down to your side. We're moving towards Shavasana now. So a couple options in Shavasana. Um, if you don't have a bolster, maybe just kind of shimmy your shoulder blades together. So the highest thing on your mat is your heart. And when you take a big inhale, you let your exhale just let you soften in, flipping your palms to the sky, this gesture of receiving. If you have a bolster and you want to explore Shavasana with an open heart, just bring it, sit up tall, bring it to the low part of your back and just gently roll onto the bolster, letting everything soften. You can let your feet flop open, soften into your mat, soften into your bolster. Soften into your space. Just close your eyes. Take rest. In Shavasana.
and reawaken your body from stillness and you're just wiggling your fingers and toes. Rolling your wrists and ankles, take a big inhale and a big exhale. And if you've got a bolster or anything underneath you, just gently remove it. Allowing your body to soften, connect. Reach your arms long behind you. Take a nice big full body stretch. And then draw your knees into your heart center. Give yourself a nice big thank you hug right here. You did it. And gently fall onto your left or right side for a moment. Letting your head rest on your arm. And then bring yourself up to seated. And could, could be Virasana. Could be Sukhasana. Any comfortable posture, allowing your spine to be long, your heart to be open. Nice deep breaths here, and gently close your eyes. Knowing that loving kindness starts with you, at your self-care. So you can share the best of you and not just what's left. Okay, we're going to end with the loving kindness meditation. So. Closing your eyes, you can repeat after me, either silently to yourself or out loud, but pressing your palms together at heart center. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be at peace. May my heart be filled with love. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, eternal peace. Thank you so much for being here today. Go in peace, and I will see you next time.